Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. hydrogen abstractions and uh, uh, like last two classes we were discussing about addition to pi system okay so today class what we'll do is that we to cover the fourth that is your energy transfer reaction and electron transfer reactions right so we'll start understanding something about your energy transfer reactions of n pi star reactivity So the first thing of energy transfer reaction, it's not a basically a photochemical reaction. Okay, it is a basically a photophysical process. Okay, it's a it's a typical photophysical process. So uh, what happens is that. Let us consider like a mo two molecules in a system. Okay, one we call as a donor molecule. We can call it as D, eh? and then we will have an another molecule which we'll call as an acceptor. I'm talking donor and acceptor with respect to energy. One can be a donor, which can donate the energy. Okay, another will be a acceptor. So, what happens is that basically if I take my donor, okay, I am not restricting right now to the carbon here, okay. I am just taking a donor molecule and then if I shine light, okay, it goes to its singlet, that is what we studied. Then if it has a chance, it undergoes an intersystem crossing and gives you my triplet. The, see, I am not. Uh, see, I have a system in which I have both donor as well as acceptor. I am just exciting my donor. I am not doing anything with my acceptor. So my donor gets excited to singlet, undergoes an intersystem crossing to triplet. Now this triplet donor react collides. Okay, basically it collides with your acceptor. And you get a sort of energy transfer where your donor gives this excited triplet energy to your acceptor. Now, your <coughs> so this collision is between your triplet excited state of your donor and the ground state of your acceptor. After the reaction, it becomes a ground state donor and an excited state acceptor. See basically I have not shined any light on my acceptor molecule, just I have shined light on my donor molecule, donor goes to the triplet state and then transfer its energy to the acceptor molecule, fine. So this process we call as energy transfer reaction. Now we will see how this happens. Okay. You can call us mechanism or how it happens is you can call us mechanism of this one. So as I said I have a donor which gets excited to my singlet then it goes to my triplet. Now if I say in triplet my donor electrons 
should be looking like this, right? Because it is triplet state, so the electron looks like in this state. Now I have my acceptor molecule. The acceptor is in the ground state, okay? So it should be mostly singlet. Now these two come and collide with each other. So what happens? A type of spin exchange, okay? You can call as an electron exchange or a spin exchange. Basically, a spin exchange happens between your donor and acceptor. So there will be an exchange of spin. So if I write, then your donor will be like this. So you get a proper spin exchange. You can see that donor was initially triplet and acceptor was ground state singlet. Now there was an exchange in spin where your donor becomes a singlet which is in ground state and your acceptor becomes a triplet. So this process, this is a type of spin exchange process or it happens because of your electronic exchange. Hmm? That is how this mechanism works, energy transfer reaction. So it's so. What you what are the two important criteria? Not criteria. What are the two important stages that happens? Is one it should happen from the triplet. Okay. The second thing is that there should be a spin exchange. Okay. The mechanism deals with like this. So you should be basically from the triplet and the there should be a spin exchange. Then you can see the energy of your donor is been transferred to your acceptor right without exciting your acceptor we will see how the application what is the beneficial use of knowing why to do the energy transfer reaction fine so this is the proper mechanism of this now we will see like what are the criteria for a donor to transfer his energy to acceptor you cannot take any donor on any acceptor which can so that you excite a donor, it will transfer its energy to acceptor. No, there are some criteria which donor and acceptor should um, take care so that the energy transfers from donor to acceptor. So we'll just see what are that criteria. So I'll, I'll just deal with my first criteria. That is what I said is that. I have my donor which is in my excited state, all right. Then I have my acceptor. See these two molecules, okay, has to come together. They have to come here together, then they have to collide. What do you think another process can happen when they are two nearby, okay? One is that they can collide. Another, before collision, can anything happen? If two molecule comes near together, okay. So one they can come close and collide. Another, most of the time, what is a, a competitive reaction happens in any bimolecular reaction? They can easily diffuse. See, they like to, they can collide or they can diffuse right clear because that is the process which happens in bimolecular reaction when two radicals or anything comes together they always have a competition re reactions of diffusing away from each other right so instead of collision they can also diffuse so if the rate of diffusion is greater than your rate of collision okay then there is no energy transfer right if the rate constant of your energy transfer rate of the energy transfer is greater than your diffusion, then you will be seeing your energy transfer reaction. That is the first most criteria. So if they can collide, then you can see the energy transfer. So what is the first foremost we can say that the, if the rate constant, if I say K, okay, K E T should be all the time greater than your K diffusion. 
Now, this should be your first criteria to be. Otherwise, they will just diffuse away from each other. They will not collide and there will be no energy transfer reaction. Any idea what is the rate constant of your uh, diffusion? Normally, any <coughs> reaction if you do, what is the rate constant for diffusion? How fast it is? Because most of the reaction has been uh, controlled by your diffusion because molecule try to diffuse from each other. So, the energy transfer is 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the power of 10 mole per second inverse k t most of the time. If you want the numbers, then they are approximately 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the power of 10 mole per second, mole inverse per second. Sir. <coughs> so, uh, so your diffusion should be what what number your diffusion you think? Yeah, study. 10 to the power of minus 14 mole per mole inverse per second. We have studied a lot. Na? So, mo most of the reaction what happens? Most of the time it tries to diffuse very fast because it is a very dominating process. Okay? If you overcome that process, then you are seeing reactions and everything happen. Okay? So, if my energy transfer is faster than diffusion, then there will be proper uh, energy transfer reaction happening. That is your first criteria. Okay? Now, we will see the second one. The another important thing is I have my donor okay, energy and I have my uh, <coughs> this is the excited energy of my donor. Okay. <coughs> there are two options acceptor can be. One my acceptor can be energy like this. Yes, sir. Or my energy of my acceptor can be like, like this also. Right? I have one acceptor molecule, I have a second acceptor molecule. So, which will be good to transfer the energy? I am going from D to D star. Okay? The first case will be good because it will be a downhill process. Mm -hmm. It can happen. This will be a type of an uphill which you do not want thermodynamically. Right? So, what it says? It says that energy of my donor should be greater than the energy of my acceptor. So, these are the <coughs> two important uh, criteria basically for energy transfer reactions to happen. Okay. One, your energy transfer should be greater than your diffusion. Second is that the energy of your donor should be greater than your energy of acceptor. If this two condition is satisfied, most of the time you can see energy is transferred from your donor molecule to acceptor molecule. Clear? Now, what we will do? So, what is the great application of this? Where we can use this chemistry? Okay. For example, I am taking a benzophenone or you can take any ketone, okay, just for namesake, I am taking this. You take any ketone. If I fertilize this, I get a product. I call it as A. Okay. So I take a, I take any ketone. I get a product. I call it as A or B, whatever. You can get any number of products. Then I am asking you a question: whether this product A <coughs> is actually coming from the singlet excited state or it is coming from triplet excited state, or this product A is coming from both singlet or triplet. How to find it? Like 
you are, you are getting a product. So, people normally if you do photochemistry the mechanistic point of view is that whether this happens from singlet excited state or it happens from triplet excited state or it happens either from singlet or triplet. It, you have seen many things where you can see reactions happening from both singlet as well as triplet. So, in that case <coughs> how this energy transfer reactions will be useful. Okay. So, what I do is that I take this benzophenone. I know the ben, uh, energy values of benzophenone, right. So, uh, what is S1 energy value of benzophenone? Any idea? You have studied that huh? around? Excited singlet energy of benzophenone 74 kilocalories per mole, okay, and your triplet is. 69 kilocalories per mole. <coughs> so, what happens your S0 can go to S1, okay. From S1, I can get the product A, fine, or it can undergo an intersystem crossing to give me from triplet A, but right now I do not know, you know from which state it is going on. So, what I do is that to the same system, if I am taking to, uh, benzophenone and doing the photolysis, to the benzophenone, what I will do? I will add naphthalene. So, you know what <coughs> energy of naphthalene, you have studied that. So, this is around 190 kilocalories per mole and 60 kilocalories per mole, the T1. Right. So now, what happens if you ex excite your benzophenone? with naphthalene in the system. So, your S0 will go to S1, then it undergoes an inter-system crossing to T1, then what it does from T1? Because the T1 of your naphthalene is the lowest excited state. We see most of the time photochemistry happens from the lowest excited state. And from this, it can transfer its energy to naphthalene. Okay because that is what we studied hmm? from the triplet excited state it can transfer. Then naphthalene will do the chemistry, okay, that I will teach you what naphthalene will do when we go for pi pi star chemistry. So, you will see pi pi star chemistry from naphthalene. Now, oh, our question was the product is from singlet or triplet. If the product is from triplet, for example, I, I am taking one assumption saying that the product is from triplet. If I put naphthalene, what do you expect? If benzophenone is giving me a product A from the triplet excited state, for example, I am making an assumption. Now, I am putting a naphthalene in the system. So, what should happen to the product? Hmm? Yeah, the, so, that the product will not be formed. So, you cannot see the formation of A because your chemistry should happen from triplet, but now triplet what it does? Instead of forming A, it will transfer all its energy to naphthalene. That means, basically you are quenching your triplet excited state. So, from that I can say, yes my reaction is coming from, my product A is forming from triplet excited state. If my product is unaffected, if it is not unaffected, still I am getting the same product that means, it is forming from my singlet excited state, clear. If half of the, if I am getting like yield of 100 percentage, but I am getting only 50 percentage yield, then you can pretty well say that it is coming from both singlet as well as triplet. So, you are quenching now triplet, so still you are getting some chemistry from singlet. So, that is why, that is how you can know 
using this energy transfer chemistry. Whether from which state you can think about the product is forming, whether it is forming from triplet or it is forming from singlet or it is forming either from singlet or triplet. Clear any doubt? Hmm? This we can basically we call as uh, quenching process or you can call this as your quencher hmm? or donor acceptor whatever concept, hmm? but this will help us to know this is one of the important application of energy transfer reaction from which state you are getting your photochemistry fine. Now, we will go down and see the second application hmm? another important application of energy transfer reaction. <coughs> I take a type of butadiene. Okay, since we are going to study pi pi star chemistry next in next next class, so it's better that you get into included involved into this. It's <coughs> when I photolyze this. See, you know, most of the time uh, alkenes, uh, the energy gap between your singlet and triplet is huge. So you are most of the time you see chemistry happening from the singlet when you go for your alkenes pi pi star chemistry. Okay. When I photolyze this, I get two product. <coughs> I get a cyclization, this type of product. I will explain you the mechanism in detail in this class, okay, how to form, but just you look for the application of energy transfer. Hmm? If it is done from triplet, So, I get this type of product. Uh, your singlet is basically a type of cyclic addition of one unit of butadiene, okay. And your in your triplet, it is two butadienes coming together and giving you this product, right. <coughs> okay. Now, <coughs> I say that see, I want to make this molecule for any of my synthesis for I want to make this product and then I want to take some use of this product for many making natural products or whatever. So, I say just I want take a butadiene photolyze I want only this product I do not want this I want the chemistry to happen only from the triplet I do not want from singlet. So, what are, what you can do? You know that pretty well if I shine my butadiene, if I shine light on butadiene, it is going to go to singlet only and it is not going to do big inter-system crossing. So, I will get only the products from singlet, but I do not want the product from singlet at all. Okay. So, what we can do? In that case, normally we use a type of sensitizer. Okay. So, for example, like I, I take butadiene, put benzophenone and do the photolysis. I do the chemistry like this, then I get I get only this products. Okay, how we get it? <coughs> See, basically, you know the energy of your butadiene. Butadiene is is zero. The, this is one twenty kilocalories per mole and this will be 60 kilo calories per mole, 60, 120 and 60 for butadiene, singlet and triplet. Now, I take my, what I will do, I, I know my benzophenone energy, uh, 
Oh, sorry, I just return. Okay. This is around 74 kilocalories per mole, 69 kilocalories per mole. Right. So, what I am going to do now is that I am not going to, I have a butadiene as well as I have a benzophenone and you know benzophenone absorbs light greater than 310 nanometer, right, 300 nanometer and your diene system have absorption around 190 to 210. So, I can use a filter <coughs> where the light can come greater than 310 nanometer, okay and then I can shine only light on my benzophenone. So, what happens you know that it goes to S0 to S1, then you know benzophenone undergoes very good intersystem crossing to give my triplet. Now, this triplet can just transfer your energy to butadiene. You know it cannot transfer the energy this way, okay, this is properly ruled out. So, it can transfer. Now, the triplet state of your butadiene is got excited. So, I am not exciting now your singlet. Basically, I am now your triplet has been excited. So, now I get only the product from the triplet. I can bypass my singlet products. <coughs> so, this we call as a triplet sensitizer. Benzophenone is normally a triplet sensitizer. Okay, this reaction we call as sensitizer reactions. Earlier, we have seen a quenching type of reaction. This reaction we call sensitizing reaction. You can sensitize whatever state you want. You can sensitize singlet or you can sensitize your triplet states and get the products from what state you want. Okay. These are very feasible. Then you get only benzophenone. You can remove a benzophenone out of the system and then you get your products. These are the two important application of your energy transfer reactions. Okay. <coughs> So, we have seen energy transfer reaction. So, we have seen that uh, energy transfer reaction is nothing but it is a physical process, photophysical process where donor and acceptor comes and collides and then the donor from the triplet transfer its energy to the acceptor. Okay, that is what we studied and we said that the diffusion, your energy transfer rate should be greater than your diffusion, the energy of a donor should be greater than your energy of an acceptor to take place. Then basically we study two important applications that you can use quenching study. That means you can know from which state the products are forming. Then if you want you can excite that particular state and get your products. Right? So, the <coughs> that is all about energy transfer reaction. Fine. This you are going to use once you go to pi pi star chemistry. Uh, most of the time you know pi pi star chemistry happens from singlet, but if you want triplet products then you have to use your source of benzophenone. You should not take a sensitizer in such a way that it should do its chemistry. Instead of this I can take acetophenone and you know acetophenone undergoes alpha cleavage. You should not take that type of uh, sensitizer. Sensitizer is something which should just transfer its energy. It should not do its own photochemistry. Hmm? Then you will be getting the products from that. Fine. So, the next reaction, the, the last one of n pi star reactivity is your electron transfer reaction. Okay. We will see that now. This is another uh, uh, class of reaction, but this reaction you have seen doing a photo reduction of benzophenone. You have, you have seen this reactions, but in this case, instead of uh, any hydrogen abstraction from the solvent, I use like uh, uh, donors type of electron donors. So I have my same way. I can take my benzophenone. I take an amine. And I photolyze in the presence of an, for example, I take an amine like this. Okay. So 
I get you out. Nice benzopinone call. This you have studied this reaction, but not in the presence of an amine, but you have studied in the presence of isopropanol. Like different solvents, you can get nice benzopinone call. But in this case, the reaction is little bit different. Okay, so we will try to understand the mechanism. Then you will know how far it is. I cannot cover in one page, so I will take the next page. We will do the mechanism of this. I have benzophenone, you know that you know, all the steps because now you are familiar with this. Now we have a step like this. Okay, uh, we have studied in the model of alkoxy radical. What alkoxy radical can does in a model example? We said that an alkoxy radical, if it has an amine type of system, it can abstract a non-bonded electron from a nitrogen. Then we call that reaction as redox type of reaction, right? We have studied. We I just showed in the model component of an alkoxy radical in the earlier class. So same way, your O dot can abstract okay, electron from your nitrogen atom to give me minus plus Uh, this you call as see you have seen many reactions where ion pair is forming, right? Where you can see, but this is a radical ion pair. Uh, these are some peculiar examples where you can see radical ion pair. We call them as a radical ion pair, and it's most like it is in a cage. Okay, it's more like it is in a cage. That is very important on this type of electron transfer chemistry. Once your O dot picks up the nitrogen you get a radical ion pair and that radical ion pair is in cage. See that is why I am saying the diffusion is very important. Uh, if these two molecules do not diffuse for example, they stay like together, then what happens? Then they can do back electron transfer. the electron can return back giving me the starting material. See that is very important in this reaction. This is very competitive process for your electron transfer. Whenever you do a forward electron transfer reactions, you always get a back electron transfer. Okay. That means this reaction is you can make it in other way around. Okay, that happens always. Mm? That is a problem, little bit problem with the electron transfer reaction. You have to find out that in a system where there is no back electron transfer happens. Mm? We call it as bet. Mm? If it diffuse, for example, instead of doing a back electron transfer, you take a system in such a way that it tries to diffuse from the cage, they come out very fast. Then you end up with a You get a system like this. Okay, uh, this will be also in system. Now, what happens? This can O minus can abstract an hydrogen. Okay, 
A proton transfer can always happen from here. My O minus can go and abstract this hydrogen because this is the facile hydrogen now top line. If that happens, then I will end up with a system H. I can just shift this electrons to get me a system like this, fine, because I will get two electrons. I will give one electron to the nitrogen, make it n double dot with the fill is nitrogen electron and keep one dot here. Hmm? So, then you know that this can combine with itself to give me benzphenocol. that you can expect ne? or this two can combine with each other. We can see this type of products also. We can get this type of products also, right. Here it can make a bond. So, that also happens. But this is the major product you get most of the time, benzophenocol. So, in uh, electron transfer reaction, you most of the time you should take care that you avoid this competitive uh, back electron transfer because that will happen most of the time mm, because they form like a cage radical ion pair. Uh, before diffusing, uh, they try to again do the electron back and then get to the starting material. Hmm? So, you, uh, but you, since you know diffusion is very fast, you get things happening to give you a products, fine. Okay. Now, we will see what uh, is there is any, now this is itself it says that you can reduce now your benzophenol. Okay with systems or you can form your CC bond formation all these things. Uh, we will see one good application uh, recently has been done using this uh, electron transfer reactions, ok. You will see that, see one good application. You have studied about protecting groups, right. Uh, so, you can take any acids, you can protect your acid and then uh, you use most of the time acid and base to deprotect them, right. So, I want a system in which I do not want to use acid or base, ok. I want to deprotect. For example, I am taking a, I am taking an amino acid, ok. I am just saying for example, I take an amino acid. I want to release the amino acid in the cell, where I do not want to do any amine like uh, acid or base wash. Huh? So, I want to release just like that. So, what that case we can use your light. So, there are many protecting groups in which you can take an amino acid, ok. You can attach to the protecting group by simple chemistry, then you take to the cell in vitro or in vivo and then you shine light. Nowadays, you have very good system where you can use even visible light, just shine visible light or UV light, then slowly your amino acid will be released. Okay, that is a very good chemistry which is coming out right now in photochemistry, protection and deep protection okay. and people are using it for a lot for uh, biological purposes. Hmm? And if you are, if your protecting group basically is fluorescent, then you can even image the cells hmm? like fluoropores, fine. So, uh, I will tell you one example uh, in electron transfer reaction how we can do that. For example, you take your acetophenone. Yeah, you know you can do your bromination, alpha bromination, you can know this. This will be my protecting group, ok. Just it is a simple, you take astrophenone, you do a bromination, NBS or whatever bromine, you get your alpha bromine. So, this will be my, uh, I call them as photo removal protecting group or you can call them as protecting group, ok. Oh, sorry, CS2 BR. Thanks. So, you get a CS2 BR.
now what I do is that I take this I can treat with any carboxylic acid I want most of the time we use amino acids okay but you can use any carboxylic acid you want you get a nice protection right I can protect now it's a simple protection you see bromoastrophenone is available even you just need to make it okay you take bromoastrophenone take an acid just stir it in DMF with simple basis you will get your protection that goes like 98 percent yield then you take this now you say sir I want to deep protect it so it is simple you take your compound protected compound use amines for example I am using you can use any um, like you if you want an amine which can absorb at 410 nanometer which is greater than the visible like 410 in the visible region you can make amines like that you can get any amine you want okay depending upon your wavelength and then just shine your amine hmm? you can end up with with the acid back So, we will just see the how the mechanism works that will be interesting. So, but um, just you can fertilize this you end up with this product simple reactions okay. Uh, nowadays for cell imaging and releasing of fluorescent compounds uh, this are, are chemistries have been used. See if you want to um, study some um, photophysiological reactions happening inside the cell you want to know how they how this cell behaves then you just inject your sample uh, instead of this phenyl if I take pyrene okay, then what happens this whole system will be fluorescent you know your amino acids are not fluorescent okay, so you do not know which cell it is going to bind but if you hook up pyrene then you know it is fluorescent then you can just by fluorescent imaging you can know which cell it is going to bind you can just watch them and once it binds then you shine your light so that the amino acid is released okay this type of works have been you can see many papers coming in jacks like that so we'll just now see the mechanism how it works see in this case what you can do see if you want you can excite your ketone but you, in this case you can simply excite your amine also both are same you can excite your amine here you can most of the time you excite your amine amine gets excited a system like this now your carbonyl can abstract an electron from your nitrogen So, you can get a system like this fine. Uh, so, in the previous case we was we were seeing this O minus grabbing an uh, hydrogen from your methyl right that is what we saw in previous examples uh, and then you film then you can make your radical to rec this time you can you will you can think about pushing this down yeah? okay if I push this I can just move this radical it is a radical okay the second equation is radical then I can push this up fine. So, if does <coughs> get an O minus 
yeah that will be abstracting a nitrogen from the solvent or from the system hmm, to give me uh, the amino acid back and then <coughs> this two can this radical okay can abstract an hydrogen from your methyl okay to give you type of astrophenone yeah you get your astrophenone back plus you get your get an amine right if you are doing this reaction in water then you thought, uh, then you think your imine get hydrolyzed. Okay. See, most of this photolysis you do it in water because you <coughs> want to do it with the system, right? Uh, in biological system. I just abstract an hydrogen from here. Okay, it's a dot radical. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Right. Then you can idolize this in water to give you normally you know that you get something systems like NHCSC that you can I uh, get it when you idolize. So this is how the mechanism happens. But we are much more worried about your acids. Huh? And you can see the acid has been released with you can release it in a high yield, high chemical yield as well as you can release with a good quantum efficiency. Um, nowadays, uh, the recently what happened is that, see, uh, instead of taking your amine, uh, I need any electron don donor. That is all my idea is, right? Anything which can donate an electron. Do you think any, any other thing other than your organic molecules, which is now, there are several papers in nature recently on this works. In our department also, we are, we are doing some packages are doing. So, you can take gold nanoparticles, okay. you can take titanium nanoparticles. So, you can excite them okay, and you can take an electron from the gold or you can take an electron from the titanium. Okay. So, what happens your carbonyl goes, abstracts an electron from the titanium, then the whole chemistry happens like this. So, uh, just um, and you know the titanium absorbs uh, in the region of what 410, 440, 450. Okay. So, you are going much more in the visible. So, you can do this whole chemistry in laser light. See, if I want to release something in the skin, okay. so just I will take my laser light, I can just show it for 30 microseconds or 10 microseconds. My titanium gets excited, my carbonyl takes the electron and releases my amino acids. So, my amine you can say sir amine is toxic, but I can think of a nanoparticles which are not toxics like titanium, gold nanoparticles, mag there are many nanoparticles which are non-toxic. So, you just have to add to them and just do it. And nowadays people are doing even inorganic complexes like ruthenium. Ruthenium are well known to absorb light greater than 500 nanometers, ruthenium complex. So, you make a ruthenium complex and you know rutheniums are very good for giving an electron. So, this guy goes and take an electron and do the chemistry. See, not only in this area, see if I want to do a pattern of Bucci reaction for example, or any alpha cleavage or pattern alpha cleavage reaction, you say that I want to do Norris type 1 reaction or Norris type 2 gamma hydrogen abstraction. Normally, what wavelength it goes? We do in ketone, okay. so it is 310 nanometer. So, you need a photo apparatus for that. So, basically you will say, sir, the main drawback of uh, photochemistry, what you say, sir, I cannot do in synthetic lab because I have to get that photo lamp. Okay. So, if you can overcome this, you can easily overcome because you know that carbonyl can abstract an electron. So, put some titanium. Okay. Instead of keeping that in the photo lamp, keep it in your CFL bulb. There are many chemistry has been published in nature, lot you can get, people do just by CFL bulb. Take your CFL bulb, which is available. Just keep your RB flask and shine. Even you does not need a cover board because it is just your bulb. Just you can wrap with the paper and irradiate for half an hour. You do all your chemistries. Your Norris type 1, Norris type 2, pattern of Bucci, 2 plus 2 additions, all are now coming. 
just by using a CFL bulb. Doesn't need to do anything by the lamp. You don't need now photo lamps. Okay, that's how the PET chemistry has the electron transfer chemistry has improved because I have a donor which can absorb light in the visible region and then can donate an electron. So that's nice, no? <coughs> okay. So the uh, so that's what all about your um, electron transfer reactions. You don't what? Yeah, that can also yeah, we want can dimethylanily. You want N? Oh C S three. You want this? Okay, sorry, sir. Oh your carbon has gone. Okay, fine. That should not be there. So that's good. Um <coughs> So that is what uh, we were just trying to understand about your photochemistry of n pi star reactivity. Uh, so, we have seen, so as to conclude uh, photochemistry of n pi star reactivity, I will just, just generalize you some reaction, just for a short summary for 2 or 3 minutes. Hmm? We will just summarize. Just to summarize, um, you have a carbonyl and you have heard this carbonyl can goes to singlet and then undergoes nice intersystem crossing that is we seen in carbonyl chemistry intersystem crossing is facile to give me a triplet right. And we have studied based on this First reaction we were studying was cleavage reactions, then we studied hydrogen abstraction, then we studied addition to pi system. We went to energy transfer, and then we went to electron transfer. So we have studied this five set of reactions, right? Um, so cleavage reactions, we were thinking about. What we studied in cleavage, remember? Yeah. Yes. So we studied a cyclic, right? Cyclic systems, and then a cyclic systems having beta hydrogen, right? So we studied this three basic system in that. In cyclic as we studied 4 membered, 5 membered and 6 member like that. But these are the 3 main groups we studied. One is acyclic carbonyl system, another is cyclic, then we studied acyclic which has an beta hydrogen. In hydrogen abstraction, we dealt mainly with gamma, okay. but we said that apart from gamma hydrogen abstraction, we said that we can also see beta. right? and you can think of delta and so on okay the number keep on increasing so we said that even it is very farther it can do an hydrogen abstraction addition to pi system we divided basically two we said that it should be electron rich alkene okay and we did for electron deficient system also So, in the last class we were discussing about energy, in this class we were discussing about energy transfer and electron energy transfer. I have shown you how the sensitizer works and your quencher. We studied both the things, how you can sensitize a reaction, how you can quencher type of reactions and then we studied about electron transfer reaction. So, these are the basically n pi star reactivity we consume. Okay. So, from next uh, so that is all about n pi star reactivity. <coughs> Next class, we 
So, let us we start with pi pi star chemistry okay, photochemistry of pi pi star system. So, we end of the class now.